Then we're going to copy paste that again. And let's say right. Now we're going to rotate it. We're not going to translate it, which means move. We're going to rotate it. So rotate. And along what axis? Well, we want to do the up axis because I'll show you. So this guy, the axis to the green, that's up. So if we rotate it along Y, as you see over here, he's going to turn that way and that way. But let's say if we did rotate on the forward, he's going to rotate like that, which is not what we want. So, or you can even do right, but we're going to do up because that'll make sense. Now let's copy and paste that again. And we'll say left. And can you guess what we're going to do? That's right, negative. But let's not have them turn at move speed. Let's make another variable. So we'll say variable turn speed, make it another float. And we'll change these down here to turn speed. That way we can set him to turn quicker than he moves or slower, whatever. But now we have to go back here and set this to 30. Now let's watch what happens. Forward, backward, left, right, left. Cool. So that's fun. Now if you move the camera, actually let's reset this camera, his position. We'll reset his rotation. Let's move him back a little bit. Let's move him up a little bit and down. Now you have a really slow car racing game or a cube racing game. So that's that. Now let's say we want him to jump. We'll create a new variable, our new, sorry, a new input, and we'll say jump. Luckily, jump's already set up because um, it was just in there by default. And we're going to say something different. We're going to say rigid body dot add force, and we're going to say I'm going to say vector 3 dot up, which is kind of the same thing as saying transform dot up, but this is going to do it um, relative to the world rather than relative to your character. And we're going to say times jump, oops, jump force. And I'm going to delete this time dot delta time because we don't need it because we're going to be using physics, which is fun. So now you got to create another variable for jump force. Now save that. And let's create a jump force as 50. But watch what's going to happen. Spacebar. Missing component exception. There is no rigid body attached to the player game object, but a script is trying to access it. So our script is trying to access a component. And this is a component menu right here. That's not there. So we're going to go to component. Physics, add rigid body. So now our guy's got rigid body. And what that means is he's going to react like a, a normal object would in real life. So let's press play again. Stop. There he goes. See, gravity's now affecting him. Boom, and now he falls over. Boop. But he can still jump. So instead of making him able to turn over, we're going to make it so he can't rotate along his X and Z axis, but he can still turn on his uh, y-axis. So let's find out. Yay! Boom. Cool. So there's your basic game. Now last but not least, we are going to do something crazy here. We're going to make you create something. So we're going to say um, my bullet and we're going to make a transform so type in my bullet and transform and what we're going to have happen is if you press our input get button fire one 
which is by default already set up. I forget what as, but we'll find out. And this is gonna. This is how you create objects in the game. So you use instantiate, which is something you don't really have to understand. It's a fancy word for create, let's say. And what are we going to create? We're going to create my bullet, and we're going to do it at our guy's position and at our guy's rotation. Now let's see if that works. So save it. And as we click on our player again, we can see that this new movement script has a my bullet section. So what we're going to do over here is going to go to create prefab. And we're going to call this bullet. Now we're going to go to game object, create other sphere. Let's see. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Which you can use these scales over here. Let's add a rigid body to it component, but let's make its mass like 0.1. And then we're to drag this sphere that we created onto our bullet thing over here. And that sets it up as a prefab. That's just kind of like a a base object that we can use elsewhere. So now we're going to drag this bullet and place it on our transform. Now let's press play and if we press fire which is control I guess. Whoa. Eesh, it's a bunch of... Woo! So as you can see I created a bunch of things. Woo! It's like a rocket. Pretty fun. But maybe we don't want to have that happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say game object create empty and that's just kind of like a whatever object and we're going to say we're call this muzzle. We're going to move that in front of our guy and a little bit up in the air. And then we're going to parent that underneath the camera. Now let's go back to our script make a new variable called my muzzle transform which is just basically his position and rotation and what have you and then instead of saying transform dot position we're gonna say my muzzle dot position and my muzzle dot rotation but before you do anything you have to go back here and set so this knows what my muzzle is, it's this object, this one right here. So we're going to click that and just drag it on to there. And now it should create the guys at the muzzle point. See? And now you have a really weird basic game that doesn't really make sense, but it's fun. And you can fly forever! Anyways, so that's probably enough for now. Save your scene. And I will see you later.